This engine would not start, it would only crank, yet had no check engine lights and all measurable pressures were reading correctly. What was the cause? We're gonna discuss it in this video. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing a topic that surprisingly I haven't made a video on yet. And if you haven't figured out by the title, I'm gonna be talking about timing and speed sensors. Now, I won't be making a video in the future about oil pressure sensors or coolant temp sensors or atmospheric pressure sensors by themselves, but I feel that timing and speed sensors can give you a lot of weird complaints or problems and a lot of people miss them. That's why I wanted to get into this video. Now, what are these types of problems I could be talking about? Well, bad timing sensors or a bad timing sensor could cause your engine to not start at certain temperatures or give you an intermittent miss, low power. Maybe your engine will start and run, but will not restart when it's hot or won't start when it's cold or tons of problems. And a lot of the times they won't give you a check engine light. So I want to talk about the timing sensors, what they do in the engine, how they operate and how to test them, all right? So first thing we're gonna discuss real quickly is why does the engine need timing sensors? Well, an electronic engine, since it's not firing based off of a mechanical pump, needs to let the ECM know what the engine RPM is, as well as where each cylinder is as far as TDC, top dead center, bottom dead center, where it is in its stroke, basically. And on the older engines, they would use just the pump. The pump would be timed to the crankshaft and there was really no electronic timing. But on an ECM or electronic control module controlled engine, it needs to know precise timing to deliver fuel and it needs to know the engine RPM. So that's the need for timing sensors. Getting back to this engine, it started and ran, came in the shop, but after shutting it off, it would not restart. And the reason ended up being the timing sensor, of course, that's why I included in this video. And we're gonna be showing you here how I figured that out. So we had checked everything. Fuel pressure, Huey pressure, no check engine lights. It was seeing an RPM signal, but wouldn't start. Now the timing sensors on this 3126 cat are not easy to get to. They're behind the air compressor. And depending on what engine, here we have a C15. You can see this is the cam gear timing sensor. There's an inside view of it with the cam gear removed. We also have a picture of a different engine. We have a C12 here. This is the crank position sensor on the bottom you will see next is a C15 crank position sensor. You can see it there in the front structure. And this was the wiring going to the timing sensor on the engine that I couldn't start, the 3126. Now I'd seen that the wires here were bare. And this was after I'd checked a lot of other things. The customer also thought it was a Huey pump because they had replaced the Huey pump driver and that had fixed it for a little bit. So I went ahead and decided to put a new harness on it because the rest of the harness looked bad and the wiring to the sensors was bad but I pulled the timing sensors out too to ohm them out. Now what you can see here is that they're pretty nasty. Not only that, someone had resealed them with silicone. They didn't replace the O-rings. And another thing to check on timing sensors is the tips are magnetic and they can pick up metal debris, gear teeth, bolts, loose fasteners, and that can throw off your readings as well, as well as metal shavings. So I decided to ohm them out. The tips were clean and the primary timing sensor on this has to be between 75 and 150 ohms of resistance. You can see this one was about 124 ohms, so this one measured correctly. So I decided to test the other one, of course, and this one's supposed to be, be between 600 and 1800. Now you can see that it is too low, it's less than 600, but the sensor is not reading static. Now it not reading statically by itself and the ohms being too low, either of those would cause it to need to be replaced. So change them out and try to start the engine. Fired up the first time. So we had fixed this problem here. So this was what I found on this particular engine, but we're gonna discuss some other problems this can give you. So the timing sensor is the first thing I always check when an engine comes in for a no start condition or an intermittent miss. Well, no, it's actually not. Uh, usually the bigger things I'm checking is fuel pressure, check engine lights, of course, Anything involved with a mechanical or electronic injector problem, such as an engine miss, something like that. But these little guys can really mess with you because a lot of the times they won't code. And many of the engines will run on either or sensor. They'll read the primary or the secondary. And sometimes, let's say your engine will start fine, but when you shut it off, it won't restart. Or it will only start on ether. Once it starts, it runs fine. 
no check engine light. These are really good to check. And as I already showed you, you can pretty much always own them out. And the reason is because they're all pretty much the same. They're magnetic. They have a coil inside that you can ohm out. And of course, you're going to look for any sort of debris on the tip since it's magnetic. That can throw it off. But if it ohms out incorrectly or the wiring to or from them is bad, that can cause all the problems I already discussed. Fail to start. Engine misses, especially on older ones where they only had one timing sensor. Check these. These are relatively cheap too. I wonder how many engines have had new fuel pumps, injector kits, all sorts of stuff checked on them or replaced, but these are the problem all the time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get into a little segment I like to call... So what we're looking at here is the bottom side of a 3126 and it's pressurized, the cooling system is, and you can see that coolant's actually coming out between the block and where the cylinder is. Now if you know about 3126s, they don't have liners. This is the first I've ever seen this, that the actual press and insert on this cylinder was leaking. So this block's going to have to be machined to be repaired. You want some more destruction? Well here we have a exhaust manifold that is cracked. It's obviously cracked. Uh, I noticed it right when I opened the hood. You can see the crack right there, and you can see the carbonate spraying onto the exhaust stud there. This has probably been cracked for a little while, but people tend to not fix things when they see them. And there's a small crack here on the flange. The reason you want to get stuff like this fixed is because it's in the shop already. The last thing you want to do is be in the middle of Kansas in January on the side of the road because your turbo fell off. Thanks for watching.